Good morning, folks. Just a reminder that you can go to observatoryproject.com anytime to see what city we are in. We'll be in Madison, Wisconsin, and have an official event tonight from 4 to 7 p.m. See the site for details. Interesting article on hot star-like objects cooling down to bee-like planets. Seems a point for the stellar pre-planetary proponents when it comes to Jupiter and Saturn. Article is linked for you below. We've been showing the Antarctic breaking high ice records left and right. This is from the NSIDC with help from NASA. But let's use NOAA's tools today to break this down even further. We're just looking at the June ice extent each year of the satellite age. Red line trending up. We've also got the September, December, and March extents going back more than 30 years. And there's no doubt the ice down south is gaining and breaking records. This, of course, contrasts the Arctic up north, which is under the average, but actually is nowhere near low record extent. Not even close, actually. Top earthquake of the day goes to South Africa. One person was killed and structural damage is being reported. At this time, here are the active tropical storms. We're going to begin off the east coast of the United States with Bertha, which is now expected to swing east and miss Canada, but then be headed directly for Europe, should weaken a bit. It's tough to believe Genevieve's remnants are still alive, isn't it? Anyway, Isel and Julio are alive and kicking and heading west to encounter the Hawaiian Islands. Last but not least, we have Heilong, taking a long time to swing north, but beautiful motion to it. In Australia, the convergence swinging up from the Antarctic low is easily spotted, and that's where the clouds and rougher weather can be found. Meanwhile, the same two systems and south swinging convergences in Europe are active, so I'll once again point out that the heat wave area in the northeast is actually hotter than portions of southern Europe. In the United States, the heat and moisture continue to rush up through the central states and meet a flow to the south from Canada. That convergence cuts across about half the country, We'll need to watch for flash flooding of its thunderstorms in this large area here. Solar wind speed in yellow is still slightly elevated while the density in orange begins to drop off. KP index shows geomagnetic instability is unchanged but the auroral weakness says the impact events were pitifully weak. Speaking of which, Solar maximum is about over and weak as can be, not only in sunspot numbers, but with the magnetic mixing, or lack thereof, amidst the sunspots, even when we do see positive and negative mixing to form a delta spot, can't seem to get any flaring from the active region. So still, the major eruption threat remains the plasma filaments. Big Boy up north is almost turned away from Earth while a smaller but still sizable filament turns in on the south. We still easily see the coronal holes both north and south, but the north is blocked by the coronal fields, leaving only the southern negative opening which appears to have some solid force to her. Right now, all is calm. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.